Good day, everybody. I hope you are well. Welcome to our first ever segment of It's More Than Just Money on the Witness and Taka YouTube channel. Uh, we're basically opening up this channel to interview people like the gentleman I'm sitting with now who I'm going to introduce that are doing entrepreneurs uh, or have built property investment portfolios and are also investing, making different kinds of investments and creating opportunities for themselves for their investors, for their employees, and obviously also creating opportunities for the population at large. Now, the gentleman that I'm sitting with is Mr. Lebuhang Lebepe. He is an entrepreneur, he's a property uh, developer, he's a property mogul, uh, <laughs> property <laughs> investor, slash, pro you, you, all things property. Yeah, I'm all things property, definitely. Yeah, yeah. yeah. so tell us, tell us more about yourself. Uh, let us get to know you. Uh, I obviously did not do your uh, your bio justice, but you'd be able to do it more than I would. But what I know is that you are big in the property industry. You've done quite a lot of work uh, in terms of township property, developing properties there, uh, and, and solving accommodation problems. 100%. No, thank you. Thank you so much for having me. And um, good day to everyone. Um, so... My, my name is Lo Hang Levi. I'm the founder and CEO of Bez House and Bez House Capital. And I am 29 years old. Um, I was born and raised in the Squatter Camp Court in Matelagofa in Timbisa. Um, I was raised by a single parent, uh, which is my mother. I'm the first born of uh, three from my mother's side, from my dad. Uh, let's not get there, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, growing up was not easy, but, um, you know, um, I didn't, you know, let the current circumstances define who I become or who I am. As much as the environment I grew up in, it's very easy to get into drugs, it's very easy to get into gangster raising because it's like a norm. Um, alcoholism, it's, it's, it's a norm. When you're not drinking, they they even mock you. It's like there's something wrong with you, you know. Um, yeah. So that's that's the environment I grew up in. But professionally, I'm a business accountant. I hold four qualifications. Um, the highest is an owner's integration, and I only lasted five minutes in the corporate world. Five, five minutes. <laughs> <laughs> and then I started Buzz House in the year 2017. Formally registered it in 2018. Then in 2018, uh, beginning of 2018, I left my job permanently to permanently run a business. So I've been running business for the past four years now, mm. um, full time. And um, look, business exists to solve two problems. The first problem that we're solving is an accommodation problem. We are bringing um, lifestyle living apartments in and around townships in an affordable amount. We're making sure that we are bringing the something product but making sure that it has a township um, price to it so we are making sure that our people can afford it can have access into comfortable secured but yet affordable accommodation spaces that they can access that restores their dignity that they can be proud to live in that's the first thing the second thing that we we solving is we are breaking the barrier to entry into property investment market particularly property development market you know as a property developer yourself that preparing for the development itself, it costs a couple of millions. Um, you're talking different, um, you know, um, your different reports, engineering reports that needs to go into that, your geotech study, your um, traffic study, your, um, your storm management plans, and your, um, you know, um, your stability report and um, your architectural um, drawings and uh, submissions of that and your engineering, structural engineering uh, drawings and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And we've even been spoken about bulk services because that alone is a, is a huge cost on its own. And we've even been spoken about the land cost itself and the, the, the property development cost itself. So as a result of that, um, a lot of people, um, that becomes a barrier to them to ent enter the property development market. So we are breaking that barrier by ensuring that we've created a fund called Business Capital where people can invest at a fraction of the cost and be able to become property investors without having, having the money required for them to do so. Um, so that's the second problem that we're solving as Business. 
So you said you were born and raised in a squatter camp. Hundred percent. In a in a township called Tembisa. Yes. Um. So that's if you don't know where Tembisa is, that's east of Johannesburg. Hundred percent. Um. That's where you grew up. Uh. So take me through your formative years, like um years where you were in primary school, high school. Have you always been someone who was dreaming of becoming a business owner? And if so, did you see yourself as someone who would eventually become uh, a property developer or someone who runs a property development company? Or was just was that something you picked up along the way? So growing up, um, I mean, because we were, um, you know, grew up in poverty. Um, so uh, my mother struggled to put food on the table. So that struggle alone, seeing my mother hustling and trying different businesses as well. Um, as, as a child, you obviously want to help where you can. You want to help, step in and help your, your, your parent where you can. So where, as and when um, I started helping my mother with different businesses that she tried, um, um, so that, um, you know, it's like uh, poverty forced me to become an entrepreneur at a very young age where mm -hmm. I, I myself started doing uh, numerous businesses. I sold sweets, I became a cameraman, I became a DJ at some point. I sold coal at home. We, <laughs> we sold um, uh, CDs, the piracy ones where we would write, we would call them, uh, we were writing a CD. So <laughs> it's like you are collecting music and putting it in one uh, one CD and um, you make a collection and you sell that to people that didn't have uh, PCs, for instance. I used to also um, buy and repair and sell um, PCs. Um, you know, we did a t different, we did sp uh, packaging, um, you know, we sold packaging materials and stuff like that. So that it's, um, you know, within the years, as I was trying to find means for us to survive, then those entrepreneurial spirit was uh, ignited in me. And, um, you know, it's like I started learning about entrepreneurship and, um, I, I eventually started selling cars, um, as well. That's where I made my most money. Yeah. Um, but being a businessman, um, I think I picked it up um, along the way, especially property. Property, I learned uh, more about property in practice as a business accountant because I had clients that were doing business development, they were, um, property development, they were doing um, rentals and flipping and stuff like that. So um, as you study the different types of property investments, you, uh, you'd see that, okay, Property development, as much as it's very capital intensive, but it's a very predictable investment. You know exactly if you put in a, one rent here, you're mm -hmm. going to get three rents, and after how long? So yeah. it's very predictable investment. It's very one of the safest assets that you can invest your money in if you know what you're doing. If For you sure. do it correctly, then it's the safest asset that you can put your money in, and it's steadily growing. It grows your money. It retains the value of your money. It creates passive income. And it also creates part, uh, cash flow every single month without you having to do much for you to earn that particular money. And if you, you were to sell, it has huge profit margins within a very short space of time. So I, I learned that in practice, and that's when I decided to uh, pursue property development. Yeah. So, well, it is clear that you are an entrepreneur uh, and that um, apart from the fact that you picked up the skills along the way, it seems as if as though you also have the the instinct uh, for entrepreneurship. 100%. So, at what point did you realize that you are not cut out to work for someone else, but rather cut out to run your own business? Because I mean, you did work for other companies, corporate. Yes. You've worked for an accounting firm before, and when you were studying accounting. It was something that you always wanted to become. You always yeah. wanted to become an accountant, either because you're good with accounting or you're one of the top students. Um, uh, unfortunately, it's actually, um, you know, my story of me becoming an accountant is a very interesting one because in high school I didn't do any accounting, but I was good in maths. So mm -hmm. I was good in numbers. I always knew that I wanted to, to do a become in, fi become in finance, even before I chose my subjects. Because, but 
Um, when we, it was time for us to choose subjects, I wanted a ticket out of high school because I was still very playful at the time. So mm -hmm. I wanted the easiest, easier, easier way out of high school. Little did I know that I was limiting my options in terms of me studying further. Uh, but when I now got serious about life and I, I wanted to now um, really choose a path and a career path for my, for, my, for my career and for my life, I then went back and I now did a study and uh, research about how do I now go about getting into the accounting stream, even though I did not do accounting in, in high school. Mm -hmm. And um, it luckily, is, um, luckily is that I, I was doing extremely well in mathematics, so that was a, my ticket into me getting into into the accounting field. So that's okay. how I got into that, and um, um, I chose I became an accountant. But in terms of um, being a businessman, um, at at a point where, so I always wanted, even when I went into corporate, I always knew that I wanted to become a businessman eventually. So it was me going into the corporate, it was me going to learn about business systems, um, to learn about how do you now run an actual business? How do you run a business? How do you grow it? How do you manage people? Just to get skills and experience in the accounting field so that I can later on um, start an actual formal business. For sure. So, uh, but then when I got to the corporate world, um, I was lucky enough to climb the corporate ladder very quickly as well because of my dedication and my hard work that I was putting in into, into, into my job and the innovative ideas that I was coming with as well. So it has put me in, in a position where I can now be trusted to make decisions about certain things in the company. So that grew my, my career very quickly. But now, as you grow in, the, in your career, you start stepping on people's toes, especially your superiors, mm -hmm. um, because now you your your job description you are boxed as, a, as an individual individual to say your job description says you can only do one up to three right so so if you do four five six which is yeah. now the duties of your superior now you're stepping on their toes where else because you did the whole thing it saved the company time and it, it created an extra revenue the boss is happy, but they're not happy on uh, how you went about doing Don't it. Okay. So in the corporate world, um, if, if you're an entrepreneur, you, you can never survive there because there's structures, there's protocols, there's procedures, and there's processes that needs to be followed. Where else, as an entrepreneur, if you see a problem, you want to solve it immediately without going through the whole protocols and uh, processes that will take longer in order for you to achieve the same thing. So you can achieve the same um, goal within a very short space of time by just solving the actual problem without going through protocols. So that got me into a lot of problems in the corporate world. Then I eventually thought, you know what, I, this is not cut out for me, now I'm leaving. Okay. So that's quite interesting uh, because um, my, my next question to you was going to be, um, as someone who finds it difficult um, as an entrepreneur to to follow structure mm -hmm. um, and to follow processes, how then do you build your own systems, structures, processes at your own company for people to follow? Knowing very well at the back of your mind that it is also difficult for you uh, to follow systems, structures, Processes, not necessarily systems, because systems work themselves out. Yeah, those structures, the rules and regulations, basically. Hundred percent. So, um, obviously, for any organization to function, it needs to have a structure in place. Mm -hmm. um, so it needs to have a protocol, a, a process to follow, and um, ultimately the system will fall into place. So, um, as an entrepreneur, you are you are your responsibility is to guide. Your, your your employees or your partners that you're working with so that they can be some form of a channel to follow, some form of a structure to follow because otherwise there's going to be chaos. Without a structure, there's going to be chaos. So, um, and a lot of employees, they actually expect you to tell them what to do and how to do it and when to do it, you know. So without the structure in place, you won't be able to be able to communicate such things to your employees. So, but because you need to now, um, because you have these structures in place, it makes it easy for you to 
um, have these processes be put in place and have people follow those. As much as the, you have a few people like you, then you you now know because you are, you are like that yourself, or you are like that yourself, then you know, you now see a potential for someone that can actually be a leader um, in a certain um, division um, of your business. So if you can identify such people and put mm. them in a strategic position that they can be able to unleash their potential and still achieve the same goals, then your business will be growing um, by just having an eye to identify people like you that are, um, are, are eager to, 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 to lead are eager to become innovative and run with certain things, but obviously under your guidance. For sure. So now on this channel, it's more than just money channel on the Witness Mtaka YouTube channel. Our main goal is to empower people when it comes to business property and shares. Um, so what advice would you have for someone who's just starting out? You know, um, they've just finished university or they've been working so it's two questions that i'm going to ask you okay first one is someone has just started they just finished university they're going into the job market mm -hmm. what advice do you have for that person the second person has been in the job market for a long time but they're stuck you know you've been in corporate you know a lot of people that were stuck 100%. you know uh, some of the animosity that came towards you mm -hmm. came because you were you got there and wanted to change things that have been there for a long time. You know, people have been used to something for a very long time. I'm not going to be happy with you. But what advice do you have for someone who's starting? And what advice do you have for someone who's, who, has, who started a long time ago but is stuck? Um, I think for both people, my, the one thing that I can say to both of them is that never stop dreaming. Um, never, never stop dreaming. Your dreams are still valid um, regardless of where you are and how old are you and um, what level of, of career you've achieved or you, whether you're starting or you've been in, in your career. And um, so never stop dreaming. That's the first thing. So for the, for the guy that is starting out, um, it, it's, it's, it's that they have, they have to have a, a vision. Um, have a vision board, write down everything that they would like to, to achieve um, in their life and break it into goals. Long-term goals, medium-term goals, and short-term goals. If they Once they have that, then now they can clearly map out a way or a, a plan to achieve their goals. Their short-term goals that can lead them to our medium-term goals and ultimately their long-term goals. And for the guy that, is, that feels stuck, um, I think they need to now um, do a retros um, introspection. Mm -hmm. um, look back, um, retrospect and look back into, into your life. Um, where did you go, uh, come wrong? Um, why do you feel stuck? Mm -hmm. you know, um, uh, what is it that you wanted to achieve? Um, um, what have you achieved? And what is it that you, uh, is at your disposable to say, I wanna, uh, this is what I want to achieve, but I feel stuck here. Mm -hmm. What is it that you have currently that you can use um, to get you to where you want to go? So that's exactly what I can say to them. To say, start where you are, use what you have mm -hmm. to achieve what you want to, to achieve. Be prioritized if you have to. Sometimes you have to downgrade in order for you to upgrade. So um, that's exactly what I can say to you. Okay, so that last statement. Um, sometimes you have to downgrade in order to upgrade. upgrade yes. Um, how important is it for an entrepreneur that's building a business um, to have the willingness to let go of certain things, basically to downgrade? Um, and is it as easy as it sounds? You, you have to downgrade? Because <laughs> I, I know a lot of people that have downgraded and they, haven't, and they haven't upgraded. No, you've upgraded, right? Yeah. But, but what I'm getting at is, you know, you know someone sitting there is thinking, you have to downgrade in order to upgrade. Yeah. But how do you downgrade without a plan? So what, what, uh, what, what would you say to someone who is in need of a downgrade, mm -hmm. but they don't see how it's going to help them or benefit them? You know, and um, maybe the question I really wanted to ask was, because you said you have to downgrade in order to upgrade. How important is it for an entrepreneur or anyone who's building their career to have that they have the willingness uh, to downgrade 
and at what point do they do so and at what what point do they now come up and upgrade again so i i i, I will speak to for for everyone right so i'll speak for for me and the plan that i used when i when i downgraded so um so there's a there's an 18 80 20 rule that i use um in my household in terms of my our finances so meaning that you 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 find a way to get your expenses to 20 percent of your income and then you use the 80 percent of your income to double your income so once your income has doubled so that you can double your lifestyle so mm. remember when you are now living on 20 percent of your income when your income doubles you are now on 10 percent so you can now go back to 20 percent you can double your, your 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 living expenses and then you use your 80 percent still to double the income once you double your income you are now on 10 percent you can now go back to um 20 percent okay. so that way i'm gonna pause you there <laughs> i'm gonna pause you quickly all right because i want to get the value out of what you say yeah right so here's a young person mm -hmm. the one that has started yeah that was starting out they decide to downgrade to 20 percent of their income yeah. maybe they were staying in sente yeah they decide to move to one of your apartments in boxbeck Villa Lisa. yeah you know instead of paying uh six thousand or eight thousand they're no, now paying 2.5 yeah right which would be maybe uh 10 of their salary or, or whatever right yeah, yeah. or a certain percentage of their salary mm -hmm. Maybe it's 15 or it's 10% and the rest of the other 10%, which makes up 20, yeah. uh, is other interest. living expenses. Yeah. So now that young person has done that, they've listened to Lebuhang, they've downgraded. How do they double their income? So let's say they have a salary. Yeah. Uh, how do I double my income as a young person? So as a young person, you need to use your money to buy assets that would now generate income and um so let's 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 take it let's make it practical for them okay let's now, make it okay, well, I'm, I'm talking for them I, I want you to to okay. actually say to a young person let's say they were earning 10 they're using only two grand yeah 20 percent so so there's eight grand how do they double that eight grand so grand? so so they can use the eight grand to to buy shares for instance um you know um like for instance i'd be very biased to say look a business capital is currently selling shares you can you can buy shares from as little as five thousand rand so if you buy shares from that you're getting about an estimated internal rate of return of about 16 percent per annum so that's a good rate considering what's currently being offered in the market and you don't have to do anything in order for you to produce that um you know um passive income so you basically are using your active income to create passive income for yourself or you can start a small business using your money so that you can you can either buy and sell something you know um, there's a lot of things that you can buy and sell in order for you to produce an additional income on the weekends um, mm -hmm. you know um, or you can take that so you've sold soap before sorry I've sold soap no no I haven't sold chemicals soap. Chemi uh, chemicals yes I've sold chemicals yeah. um, laboratory chemicals um, so we bought... were you doing that when you were still employed and were you using your 80 percent to do that so i did that when i now because i only downgraded when i was now moving from corporate to business mm -hmm. so yeah. you downgraded when you were in entrepreneur yes when i was so you realized that, that, that lifestyle that, that, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so that lifestyle was costing me much so the the, the bridge between an, a, an employee to now become an entrepreneur i needed to downgrade my lifestyle so that i can build real assets that can take care of me and my family right mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. um in order for me to do that then i then had to downgrade and then i started businesses that um i mean i was in trucking business i made a lot of money and i lost a lot of money in that trucking business as well um but i i, I made more money as well um, from it i also did um, you know buying and selling of cars so you buy a car and then you sell it you fix it up and you sell it at a, at a, at a higher price um, that's one of the, the things that they can do um you know they can they can invest in other people's businesses if they don't have right. the time mm -hmm. so they can take their money um saved up um let's say eight grand times three it's eight sixteen twenty four that's twenty four thousand rand someone needs that twenty four thousand rand to boost their business in order for them to generate more sales so they can uh, do that and then they can start um you know their business 
um, you know, to own shares in other people's businesses or just giving people business loans. You know, um, you know, those are some of the things that people can use in order for them to um, generate um, more income and double their income. Let's say you've put, you've put in 100,000 rand in someone else's business and it, that, that 100,000 rand is giving you 10,000 rand per month, for instance. Um, now you no longer earn 10,000 rand, you now earn 20,000 rand. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So now you can double your income to, to now 4,000. Mm -hmm. And you can do the same, mm -hmm. um, and then you can double your income again to um, eight thousand. Now your living uh, standard is becoming better. So that advice, right? Yeah. Um, I would obviously do it if um, I'm alone. Uh, for instance, I'm starting out. Mm -hmm. I don't have any kids. I don't have family. You know, uh, a family yet. Yeah. No debts yet. Yeah. You know? Most people that are the reality is that in South Africa, a lot of people are in debt. 100%. And a lot of people are under tremendous pressure because of schooling is expensive. If you want to take your kid to a really good school, it's not mm -hmm. cheap. Um, then let's say that the people that are stuck yeah. would not be in the same position as the guy who's starting. Okay. Right. So the guy who's starting 100%. Uh, would be willing to take that advice, but what do you say f to someone who's got a family? Maybe he's got a wife, two kids, uh, both in private schooling, but he's stuck and he wants to double his income, 100%. and he wants to reduce his expenses yeah. to twenty percent of his income. So they what, don't what do you necessarily have to reduce it to twenty percent. So twenty percent is my rule. No, I, I want to go by your rule because right, cool. your rule. Uh, frees up a lot of money for investment. 100%. So, meaning if I was earning 100k and I live on 20, I've got 80k to mm -hmm. invest and grow. So yeah. It means I can get somewhere quicker. Let's 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 just stick to your 20%. All right, cool. So you don't have to reduce it drastically to 20%, right? So you can work your way to 20%, meaning that you can slightly downgrade whether it's a car Mm -hmm. or a house mm -hmm. or you know certain expenses that you are, are not necessary or so you just nip it yeah everywhere take 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 from take a bit from somewhere so that you can free up a bit of cash flow you can use property as one of the assets that you can build um you know your income with um you can once you downgrade it a bit you freed up a bit of your credit accessibility uh, right. to the bank Right. Or if you've been as a as a person that has now been working for years, um, maybe you've been paying for your bond for the past fifteen years, and you have access access equity in your bond. How about you access that in yeah. order for you to create, you know, um, you know, an, an additional income that will take care for, of the additional bond, and and now create more income for you. Then sure. that you can now use that to build up your income ultimately while you are keeping your expenses the same. Mm -hmm. That now the more income you build up or you double, the more the lesser the percentage of your current living expenses until you get to the twenty percent. Now you, when you double, you are now at ten percent. So For ultimately sure. now you've caught up to the 20, 80 eighty percent rule that I use. All right. So uh, we are nearing the end of our interview if you haven't subscribed to our channel uh please click on the subscribe button click on the notifications button comment uh challenge Lebohang on some of the thoughts that he's put in place uh let us know what your thoughts are um let us know where you're watching from uh and then you can also follow Lebohang on facebook uh he's on youtube as well you can find him Lebohang Lebepe. he's also on instagram Lebohang Lebepe. Uh, so, Mr. Lbipi, any last thoughts that you might be having uh, before I ask you the two last questions? All right. Last thoughts that I have is that make sure that you buy as many shares as you possibly can on Bezaus Capital. We are doing some incredible things in the township. You would want to be part of that history making that we are about to do in the townships. So you'd want to have your money, send your money to work instead of you having to work for money all the time. Remember, an opportunity of a lifetime must be seized in the lifetime of that opportunity. I'll say that again. An opportunity of a lifetime must be seized in the lifetime of that opportunity. All right. And then your three favorite books. 
my three favorite books is it'll be um, number one um, how to win friends and influence people and um, that speaks to your communication skills uh, because once you open your mouth um, you can't take that one that word back all right so um, and also how you present yourself because I mean you you when you interact with people people judge you as to how you express yourself Mm -hmm. And that also speaks to you, you know how you how well you sell your idea and how well you relate to people. Um, number two, um, that will be a, a cash flow quadrant um, from by by Robert Kiyosaki. Um, so that that speaks to the different quadrants as to where people fall under and how to build yourself and how to move from a different quadrant to a different one meaning if you're an employee how do you move from being an employee to self-employed from self-employed to a businessman from a businessman to become an investor mm -hmm. so those are the four quadrants that we speak about so how do you move um, from one quadrant to become and which uh, quadrant is better for you to to be in and then the third one um, that speaks about self development and 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 um, having having a, a, a clear uh, plan on how to start your morning, which is the five a.m. club. Um, so the five a.m. club it, it speaks to you the structure, your morning routine, and um, you know how do you now you know um, start to have a plan towards the the, 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 the the day ahead. How do you clear your mind? Um, you know having a routine. Um, for you to to have that those are the three top three but my most favorite simple one for everyone <laughs> this one uh guys you're being biased eh? i'm not being biased actually eh? um remember when you launched this book um what else was it two years ago already 2020 yeah, yeah 2020. two years ago yeah. already so when almost, you launched almost two years almost two years so when you launched this book um i bought it um and then i came i read it within two days and then I came back and I bought for everyone that works for me. That's so that's exactly that, what you did. Yeah. yeah. So that's exactly what tells you of the value that I've seen in the book itself. For sure. For for, sure. for everyone um, to to improve their lives, to improve themselves, and also to better their lives as well. Mm -hmm. Your favorite inspirational person. Myself. Yourself. In ten years. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, there you have it, uh, Mr. Lebohang Lebepi. Thank you so much for making time no, to chat to me. us and for dropping uh, those many nuggets that you dropped. No, uh, you I me. wish you a lot of prosperity and success in your business. Uh, may you have a lot of developments, more people investing, and may I meet you in 10 years' time again and be inspired. <laughs> <laughs> and Thank, you. Thank you very much for that. Sure, sure.